you know, I, I will often say to clients, like if all the working out that you did and all that eating, like if it was going to, if it, if your body wasn't going to change, would you still do it? And I think that's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. They start to then feel the pressure of like, oh, I have to love this body. Like I'm supposed to love this body. And again, it's then we're still focusing on the body. And I would love for us to take the focus away from the body, away from our appearance, because those things are not static. They're going to change. Like, you know, we're going to age. Things are going to sag. We're going to look very different. We want our, our worth to be completely detached from our appearance. Welcome to yourbrilliance.com. I'm your host, Amy Waterman. Are you sick and tired of being judged based on how you look? This is the first thing everybody notices about you, right? No matter who you are, no matter what you've achieved, it all comes down to your body. And of course, your body's never good enough. Our guest for today, Summer Inanen, is going to help us break free from body shame and feel confident in the body we're in. Summer is the author of Body Image Remix and the host of Fearless Rebel Radio. She's a professionally trained coach who's worked with hundreds of women to overcome self-doubt and stop thinking negatively about their bodies. Welcome, Summer. Thank you so much for having me here. So first of all, I just want to say I love the work you do. I think it's so important now because I think body shaming is actually getting worse. Even professional women on social media get body shamed. We're hearing now that it's affecting girls as young as five. So because your work is directly combating that, do you think that there's a way that we can overcome it and kind of overcome the tide and start really changing things? Yeah, absolutely. I do. I think that it's, it's totally possible, you know, but we, you know, we have to acknowledge that we've been programmed to feel negatively about our bodies. It, it's the messages that we receive from the time that we're born. We start to receive these messages that being thinner is better and that our worth as a woman is in our appearance and our desirability. And so we have to acknowledge that the negative thoughts we have, none of that is our fault. Um, And yet we can still put in effort to try and unlearn the harmful messages that we've learned and relearn a new belief system that honors who we are and, um, and supports the belief that we are good enough as is. So I love that. And what I really appreciate as well is you have gone through this journey yourself. You didn't start out automatically uh, feeling confident and knowing that your body didn't define you. You actually were in, I think it's your mid thirties when, when you had your own wake up call. Yeah, that's right. So I think like most people, you know, I, I don't remember a time that I ever felt comfortable in my body. And, uh, you know, for me, I was, I was a real chronic dieter and I spent, um, you know, decades of my life just thinking that the pursuit of thinness was my purpose um, and that my weight defined who I was. And it did. I mean, it was, it was like literally if the scale was down, I felt better about myself. If it was up, like I hated myself. And my, all of my emotions and mood were tied to the size of, of my body. And it progressed to the point where it started to have uh, a negative impact on my health in terms of I was over exercising, I wasn't eating enough. Um, I was constantly in like this like restrict binge cycle. And I felt like I could never stick to a diet, which for anyone listening to this, that's not your fault. That's like, we're not actually meant to be able to stick to diets. Your body is trying to protect you when you break your diet. Um, But uh, yeah, no, it got to the point where like it impacted my hormonal health. And I finally found a doctor that actually um, acknowledged that the cause of my hormonal issues was um, the fact that I was putting so much chronic stress on my body through dieting and and over-exercising. Um, and it was in that moment that, um, you know, I really realized that I had a problem, you know, all the stuff I thought was just so normal. I thought it was normal to, um, always be on a diet. And I thought it was normal to, you know, think that you had to go and like work out so hard every day and all this stuff. Um, and I thought it was healthy. Like, I think, you know, for me, I was even just brainwashed into thinking that I was trying to just be healthy. Um, but really when all the layers were peeled back, it was just that, you know, I, I hated my body and I didn't feel good enough with who I was. And so the, you know, kind of having those health implications and finally finding the doctor to sort of say like, Hey, Summer, 
you know, you're not eating enough, you need to stop exercising, um, take a break from it for a while to really heal. That was the catalyst for me to really start looking at, um, you know, the root of it, which was body dissatisfaction and my self-worth and my self-worth being attached to the size of my body and not feeling good enough. And so um, I did a ton of work around that and um, completely changed my business around because at the time I was a nutritionist, which um, it's kind of scary to think, but I think there's a lot of nutrition professionals out there that are promoting disordered behaviors. Um, and, uh, and, and now I help people to, you know, feel better about who they are and really not care so much about how their body looks. You said so many things in that, that I want to follow up on, but one really caught my attention. You said that we're not actually supposed to stick to diets, that it's our body's attempts to protect ourselves. Yes. Yes, yes. So there's uh, there's not one proven form of long-term weight loss that works for the majority of individuals. I think everyone needs to to be aware of that. Um, and you know what happens is when we restrict anything, both physically and mentally. So even if you're just looking at something and you're thinking I shouldn't eat that, or I feel so guilty for eating that, or any of that stuff, like that's all mental dieting. Um, but the physical, when we physically restrict our food, um, our body fights back. Like our body wants to keep us in homeostasis. And so when we bring our um, energy, uh, sorry, caloric consumption down, uh, our body puts compensatory measures into effect in uh, which normally people can relate to. Like they think they're binging or they think they're like emotionally eating or they're like, why do I always eat sweets at night? I can't stop myself. No, your body's probably trying to protect you because you didn't eat enough. <laughs> like you're not eating enough or you're restricting food and the restriction is both mental and physical. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. Cause one of the, <laughs> the other things that you had said as well is that we think that dieting and exercising is healthy. We get so much approval for doing it. You know, we get admired by the opposite sex. We get admired by women. Everybody says how great we look. We have that badge. Ooh, I'm healthy. So it's a lot to think that maybe we're going in the wrong direction. It's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Well, I think we, it's, you know, it's not to say that like exercising is bad. I would never ever <laughs> say that or that like eating, you know, certain foods is, is not going to be beneficial for you, but I think it's how we are approaching it. And I think, you know, we want to take our weight out of the equation and focus on like how things are actually making us feel and really tune into our body and ask ourselves like, you know, do I even feel like moving today? Like, do I want to go to that workout class? Or am I just doing it because I feel like I should because I feel like I have to lose weight? You know, do I want to eat this salad or do I really want this burger? Um, you know, what's going to feel best for me right now? And, you know, I, I think we're so detached from that because we're following all these rules from other people. And like you said, it's really attached to, you know, trying to, as Brene Brown says, like hustle for our worthiness, like try to gain approval from um, other people because we, especially as women, because we've been told that our desirability is the most important thing. So what I'm also thinking now is that this has to do with, so what now I'm seeing is that that often that desire for exercise and for eating healthy actually has less to do with health. And it has to do with wanting the social approval of having a body that looks right. And what I'm hearing you say is that it actually numbs us to the signals from our body because we are looking at our reflection in the mirror to decide what to do. We're also self-flagellating and using discipline and shoulds to figure out what to do. And we stopped actually listening to our own signals. Yeah, that's a really, you've said it so well. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you said it, you said it very, very well. Exactly. And I think it's like, you know, I, I will often say to clients, like if all the working out that you did and all that eating, like if it was going to, if it, if your body wasn't going to change, would you still do it? And I think that's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. Like why, if the, you know, the pursuit of thinness, it really just, it takes up so much mental energy. It takes up so much time. It takes up all these resources financially too. If you think about like, you know, how much money we spend on like superfoods and exercise classes. And again, I'm not saying any of those things are inherently bad. I think it depends on the way in which we're approaching them. And if we really are approaching them from like a self-care perspective versus um, a self-deprecating perspective. 
One of the other things I really love about your work. So one of the things I followed for a long time is the body positivity movement. And what I like about that is it's about finding the beauty in all sorts of different body types. But one of the things you woke me up to is the fact that there's actually a layer, a problematic layer in that, which is you say that changing the way you think about your body is not about liking how you look. Yeah, like I think, and I think that that can actually be really freeing for a lot of people, you know, to, 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 to like have that shift because they start to then feel the pressure of like, oh, I have to love this body. Like I'm supposed to love this body. And again, it's then we're still focusing on the body and I would love for us to take the focus away from the body, away from our appearance, because those things are not static. They're going to change. Like, you know, we're going to age, things are going to sag. We're going to look very different. We want our, our worth to be completely detached from our appearance. And so when I work with people, it's not about having them like the way they look. It's about having them be able to look in the mirror and maybe like it, maybe not like it, but go on with their day and not give it a second thought. Like to just be like, okay, well, it is what it is, but you know, I got more important business to do in this world. <laughs> So one of the things you write about in your book, Body Image Remix, is this exercise, and I really wanted to ask you about it. It's about envisioning your future badass self. Could you share a little bit about that and why it's so powerful? Yeah, sure. Well, I think, you know, the work that I do is a little different in that, like from somebody who's like pursuing weight loss, because when we, when we have weight loss, you have like this like tangible outcome that you're trying to go after. When I'm working with people, we're talking about like having a positive body image and being more confident. And so I want them to create a vision of like what that's actually going to look like in their lives, what they're going to do differently, what they're going to say differently, how they're going to show up differently. And so maybe that means something like I'll actually wear a bikini to the beach. Um, I will um, be able to set ba better boundaries with my mother. I will speak up more at work. I will, um, you know, wake up in the morning and not give a second thought to how my body looks. And so, you know, I, I want people to kind of paint that picture because it gives them a vision to go for. Like, I think, you know, anyone who's working on self-improvement knows the power of having kind of like a, a vision for what you want to achieve. And so it's this, it's the same thing. So it's like kind of imagining like, okay, if you're free of the shackles of body hate, what is like, how are you going to be? And what's that going to look like? And a lot of people haven't given that a lot of thought. And so it's an important exercise to run through. And um, I also have people kind of connect with like how, how that's going to feel for them and what's really going to change in their lives. Um, so that, you're not so tied to um, thinking that the pursuit of weight loss or the pursuit of thinness is the thing that's going to make your life better. It doesn't have to be attached to that. So I just want to quickly ask you, so when you work with clients, how do you see them transform through this process? Like, do they end up becoming less attentive to like the details of appearance or do they actually end up looking more beautiful simply because they're not, they're free from all that concern. Like, I'm just kind of trying to, in a visual, what way, yeah. how do they change? Yeah. So, you know, I think what I notice like visually is, is people are less drained looking <laughs> like, because, and, and I've actually had clients like say this to me I, a lot of like when I, you know, and ask them like, how does this feel now? It's, they have that time and energy back like they've reclaimed this time and energy. And so you, you can see it on them. And I think that there's also this presence of just like a more relaxed confidence, like just more peace with who they are. And I do believe if you're a more intuitive person, you pick up on that with other people. I know when, when I went through this, like my friends said to me, they were like, you just seem so much more chilled out now like you just seem so much more like comfortable and I think when we're being we're, when we're so in our head when we're so self-conscious like you know you can t other people can tell maybe not specifically but they'll notice a difference when you're not necessarily feeling that way or not and that's okay if they don't too um and in terms of other things that I notice like I think it happens really gradually um it's not like they wake up one day and they're like damn, like, I just feel so much better. Like, it's very slow. It's ups and downs. And that's why I like to kind of have kind of like check-ins along the way to, to see, 
you know, where, how are we doing compared to where we were and what are those things that have changed? Because it's not as tangible as something like, um, like I keep using weight loss, which, you know, I, but that type of thing, like it's different. It's like, sometimes you don't notice that like, oh, Hey, I actually like went almost the whole day without thinking about my body. Like, that's really cool. You kind of have to like, almost like have those conversations to then realize like, wow, I've come a long way. Or like, I put on my outfit today and I didn't change it 15 times. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, um, I wasn't checking my stomach every time I walked in the bathroom, like all that stuff. Uh, it, it's a little more subtle to notice the changes, but you know, those are the things that I, I definitely keep track of when I'm working with people so that we can celebrate those things. And then ultimately, like after, you know, a period of time, they really start to feel how much that weight has lifted from them. See, and I love that the weight has lifted from them because in a lot of ways, the weight we carry isn't just physical. The weight we carry is the constant thoughts in our heads and the constant self-control, the constant control of how we look and all that stuff. And that's what makes you feel lighter is not losing the weight, but it's losing the, the mental and emotional weight. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of baggage to carry around. It's, it's a lot. Um, you know, if you think about the amount of energy and time that goes into critical thoughts and the emotions associated with those, the shame and the frustration and the disappointment, uh, it's a lot of stress. And to not have that is, is huge. And it's really, it can be quite energizing and, and, and more importantly, just peaceful, just quiet, you know, to be able to just feel a lot more grounded in who you are. So that is one wonderful part of it when we can drop the self-criticism coming from inside our own head. But I want to know when what your clients go through this work and then they get out into the world where like they've got their professional social media uh, account going and somebody writes something about their appearance when actually what they posted was work related and they get that that hit because it does hit you when somebody comments on something that's completely irrelevant you know how do how do people then go through that how do they um keep that from maybe affecting them so hard I think it's it's a, it's a really tough thing and I think it's one of those things that is going to hurt um and probably will hurt for a while. I don't think we can all become completely bulletproof to criticism. I think that um you know, we can try really hard to try and detach from from criticism and from praise and I think certain areas of our of our being are easier to do that. So for example, like I don't care if you think I'm a bad parallel parker, that's okay. You can criticize that <laughs> even though I'm not. I'm actually a very good parallel parker, but I use that as an example. Um versus like, you know, something that like our appearance which it which when someone says that, it's kind of like an attack on our our on our our entire being because that's what we've been conditioned to to believe and so I think that it's about having compassion for yourself that like okay that was really hurtful um, seeking out some kind of support to really talk about those feelings and certainly like setting boundaries with individuals who who make comments uh, about your body um, and and calling it out and and not being afraid to do that um, you know, not just kind of laughing it off or, or anything like that, but to say, you know, like that makes me feel really ashamed or that's a really inappropriate comment. Please do not comment on my, on my body or what I'm eating. Um, and then knowing that, you know, it can take a, you know, maybe a week or sometimes even longer to kind of heal that wound to really kind of work through the emotions around that. Um, and I think that you get better at it. You get more resilient as time goes on and you really start to think like, okay, I really don't care if they are criticizing my body, but it takes a lot of time to build up that resilience. And to help the people watching get started on that journey, you are offering our audience a free body confidence makeover. It's a 10 day challenge. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So it's a 10 day challenge that has 10 steps to take to feel better in your body. And it's, it's kind of sets a really good foundation for, for doing this work. Um, so it really looks at, okay, the things that feed the negative thoughts and let's talk about how we can get rid of those things. And then let's talk about things we can do to start to promote more um, positive thoughts about who we are or more neutral thoughts about our body. 
Fantastic. And for those of you watching, if you want to get your body confidence makeover, or you just want to see some of the resources that Summer has to offer, her book, her Fearless Rebel radio show, we have a link for you. Just go to yourbrilliance.org slash summer. That's yourbrilliance.org slash summer. Summer, thank you so much for coming onto the show. And I wondered if you had any last message you would like to leave our viewers with. Sure. I think just, you know, know that, you know, you are, are good enough just, just as you, just as you are and that you really can believe that for, for yourself and that we have to, you know, we really have to kind of get free of these messages that we've been conditioned to believe about ourselves. And I believe that when we do that, we have the power to really make a lot of change in this culture and that the mark that you leave on this world is not in the size of your body, but the fire in your soul. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you out there for watching. Now, did you have any aha moments while watching this interview? If so, let us know in the comments. For more interviews like these, make sure to subscribe to Your Brilliance TV here on YouTube, and then come on over to yourbrilliance.com for more tips and insights on how you can live your most brilliant life. See you next time.